Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 6 of our understanding the ABC of Docker video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about linking multiple containers to perform a single operation. So this is kind of very, very important because there will be a lot of situations where you will be using multiple containers all together to perform one single operation. Let's say if you have a application server running in one container and if you have a database server running in another container, then you will be ending up working with different or multiple containers to perform a single operation, which is nothing but opening a website. So we are going to work on that using links of Docker's. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part six, since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. All right, so let's get started. Linking Docker containers with links. Links allows Docker containers to discover each other and securely transfer information about one container to another container. When you set up a link, you create a conduit between a source container and a recipient container. The syntax is basically going to look something like this. So you will have a Docker run and there is going to be a name of the local container name. So the local container name can be any of the container that you have. And then you are going to link another container using what is called as hyphen hyphen link, right? So this link is going to create a link to another container with the actual container name. So you can see there is a local container in the less than or greater than symbol. And then there is a colon actual container name. So this actual container name is going to be the container provider where you're going to link towards. So this is how you can link your actual Docker container. So we'll be talking about working with this linking of containers in a minute. So this is the basic syntax of it. So in this example, we are going to link a WordPress container and a MySQL container. So here your website is going to be your WordPress and the database, which is the backend of the WordPress is going to be the MySQL server. So we are going to download these two container using the Docker run command or Docker pull command to perform the retrieving of the container from online. And then we'll store those two containers into our local Docker of the Hyper-V and then we're going to perform the operation. So let's start working with it and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to PowerShell. So this is the same PowerShell that we were working in our previous video. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clear the screen and let's go to the hub.docker.com. And the first thing which we're going to do is installing the MySQL container in our Docker. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over here and there is something called as MySQL container. So this is official. So let's quickly click this and see what is the command to perform the operation. So the good thing about this containers and the informations about this is you can see that Docker pull MySQL. This will basically pull the MySQL for you as your local image. So I'm just going to copy this, go over here and just I'm going to paste it. So you can see that it is automatically going to pull the MySQL latest version and then you start downloading that for you and you can see that it is close to like 51 plus 8 it is like 60 to 70 MB so I'll be back in a minute once it is done seems like our MySQL container is currently downloaded and then let's quickly see what is the command to start the MySQL or run the MySQL container so as you can see the help for this particular container is very 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 helpful as you can see what is this particular image is all about and then you can also see how to start the mysql server instance how to connect to the mysql from an application in another docker container so they have also given an information on how to connect this mysql from an application in another docker container and you can see what is the command for doing that and then they have also given how to connect the MySQL from the MySQL command line client. So you can also connect the MySQL server from the command line client and this is how you do that. And similarly container shell access using custom MySQL configuration files and what are the different kinds of environment variables available to perform the different kinds of operations. So all the help features which is available for that particular MySQL is already available right here for you. 
but we are going to worry only about this particular command for now and this particular command where we start working with linking the two different containers so let's see what is this particular command doing as you can see we have this docker run hyphen hyphen name as we saw in our slide and then the name of the sql server instance and then hyphen e which is nothing but the environment variable and here you have to set the password for your mysql database server so this is going to be your secret password and hyphen d for the daemon process which is nothing but the mysql and colon the tag so actually the tag is nothing but you can see there are different kinds of versions available the 5.7.14 5.7 5 or latest if you specify latest then the latest and the greatest version of mysql image will be downloaded into your docker so what i'm going to do i'm just going to make use of these commands to perform the operation so let's quickly see what is the command to run the mysql server so the thing is docker run hyphen hyphen name and i'm going to give a name for this sql server as easql and hyphen e so the environment variable is going to be case sensitive you should give it correctly which is going to be abc123 and process which i'm going to start as a daemon or i'm going to download is going to be the latest one i know i already have the latest version of mysql so i'm going to start the daemon process of the mysql so you can see that it has already started and right now if i just go to the docker ps hyphen a remember the one which we are discussing so far in our previous videos if i run this you can see that our mysql is currently running and this is the container id for it our back end is right now ready and the front end is nothing but our wordpress that's kind of important right so what i'm going to do i'm just going to go back and here let's search for wordpress and you can see there is a official WordPress image for the container is also available. So let's see what is the command to pull the Docker WordPress image, which is nothing but Docker pull WordPress, right? So let's copy this and I'm just going to paste it right here. Oops, Docker pull WordPress. I'm going to hit enter and you can see that it is going to pull the latest WordPress version for us. So while this is downloading, you can see that within this WordPress image, we have again the same kind of stuff. So Docker run and here you can see that the name of the WordPress site and here you see you can, it is automatically expecting us to pass the hyphen hyphen link here because it expects a MySQL server database, which is nothing but our EASQL server database that we have just started, right? The EASQL right here. So we can give that EASQL for linking and colon MySQL hyphen D WordPress. So this should install the latest version of WordPress in your local machine. So this is just for linking. So what if I want to access this particular WordPress from a port number in your local machine? So you can see that we can also expose the port here. So there is a difference between this command and this command so if you want to access your wordpress in your local machine then you have to give something like a port number right so hyphen p 8080 colon 80 so this will actually expose this particular port as public for every containers and also for the local machine that you're going to access to right so once the downloading is completely done I'll be back and I will show you how quickly we can link these two container and make a fully running WordPress website. All right, seems like the latest version of the image is downloaded, but the PowerShell is kind of scrambled. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a CLS. All right, seems to be a little okay. And now if I go to the Docker images, you can see that we have the MySQL image and the WordPress image. So the WordPress is currently ready to rock and roll, but we have to start this particular WordPress as well. So before we start this WordPress site, we first of all need to install the WordPress into our local web server, right? So this particular image that you are seeing right here will have a web server in it. 
and this will install the WordPress into that by connecting or linking into this particular MySQL database server that, that we started earlier. So you can see that we can see the running process which is nothing but the MySQL database and now let's quickly try to link these two things. So this is the place where we are going to link our MySQL database with the WordPress container. So the command is docker run hyphen name and let's give the name of this WordPress site as EA local and I'm going to link with my EA SQL which is nothing but my MySQL and I'm going to expose this EA local website to a port number as this specified in the help 8080 colon 80 hyphen D WordPress there we go so as you can see that the WordPress container is also started right now and now if I just do a docker hyphen A and you can see that the WordPress is also running and it is running in the port number 8080 so you can actually see this as well docker port of this particular container the WordPress container paste it right here it will show you the port number as 8080 how to access this very very simple just go to your browser just type localhost colon 8080 there we go you can see that we are now invited to install the WordPress into our container so which means now there is a handshake between the database server and your WordPress so it seems like everything is going good let's hit the continue to install our website so it is going to be execute automation local and let's give a password maybe a very very strong password this time as admin123 cool right let's confirm use of weak password and the username is going to be admin and then I'm going to hit install WordPress so you can see that it will install the WordPress for us all right seems like everything's okay so now let's hit login admin admin123 hit ok there we go so because there is a connectivity with the database actually this particular website is appearing here and you can quickly create a new post this time let's say I'm going to create a new post uh, saying linking multiple containers we have successfully established linking and working with multiple containers in dockers thanks and then I'm gonna hit publish so it is publishing the website post and now if I go to the view post right here there we go you can see that our site is currently up and running it is also showing my picture there and you can see that we have this particular post as well we have successfully established the linking and working with multiple containers in dockers great right so this is how you can see that we can work with multiple containers using dockers to perform two different operations: one for the database and one for the ui operation so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day